Well, good Wednesday morning to you folks. Hopefully you had a good night's rest and you are ready to face the day. I'm going to read to you from the book of Matthew this morning in chapter 27 of the book of Matthew. It says in verse 19, When he was set down at the judgment seat, his wife sent unto him, saying, Have thou nothing to do with that just man? For I have suffered many things this day in a dream because of him. And of course, this is Pilate we're talking of here. But the chief priests and elders persuaded the multitude that they should ask Barabbas and destroy Jesus. The governor answered and said unto them, Whether of the twain will ye that I shall release unto you? They said, Barabbas. Pilate saith unto them, What shall I do with then with Jesus, which is called Christ? They all say unto him, Let him be crucified. And the governor said, Why, what evil hath he done? But they cried out the more, saying, Let him be crucified. When Pilate saw that he could prevail nothing, but that rather a tumult was made, he took water and washed his hands before the multitude, saying, I am innocent of the blood of this just person. See ye to it. Then answered all the people and said, His blood be on us and on our children. And wow, is that a statement there? I say, be careful what you ask for. Uh, because did they ever suffer after this? Wow. Then the soldiers of the governor took Jesus into the common hall and gathered unto him the whole band of soldiers. And they stripped him and put on him a scarlet robe. And when they had plaited a crown of thorns, they put it upon his head and a reed in his hand, and they bowed the knee before him, and mocked him, saying, Hail, King of the Jews! And they spit upon him, and took the reed, and smote him on the head. And after that they had mocked him, they took the robe off him, and put his own raiment on him, and led him away to crucify him. And as they came out, they found a man of Cyrene, Simon by name, him they compelled to bear his cross. And when they were come into the place called Golgotha, that is to say, a place of a skull, they gave him vinegar to drink, mingled with gall. And when he had tasted thereof, he would not drink. And they crucified him and parted his garments, casting lots, that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by the prophet. They parted my garments upon them, and upon my vesture did they cast lots." So they crucified him. Then they sat down and watched him. And they sat there and watched him until he died. I remember years ago, years ago, our boy was probably 10 years old. Maybe he's 11 years old. We went to a, to a local church here that was having an Easter play. And in this Easter play, uh, they were showing the crucifixion and you could hear the hammer hitting the nails, big spike nails. And it was shortly after that that our son, who was about, um, well, he was about 11 years old, I would say, uh, at the time. So this has been a, a, a good while ago. He said he couldn't hardly stand that. He just put his hands up to his ears because what broke his heart was he thought he's doing that for me. And I say there are a lot of people today that probably put their hands over their ears spiritually. They don't want to hear it, but I'm telling you today, he did it for you. I'm thankful that he did it for me. I'm not thankful that he had to, but in a sense, I am so thankful that he did what he did for me. Sometimes it is that story of the cross. And it is the preaching of the cross is to those that are lost. It's foolishness, the scripture says. But to us who are saved, it is the power of God and the salvation. There's something about Jesus being lifted up on that cross, like he told Nicodemus, if I be lifted up, I will draw all men unto me, just as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness. I must be lifted up on that cross, lifted up. It does something to a man, to a woman. The convicting power of the Holy Spirit lets them know that, hey, he did this for you. And that's why I've always loved this song. I'm going to try to sing this song. It just talks about a simple man who showed up to church on an Easter Sunday one morning, but left a different way than he came. Sam was a 
carpenter 50 years He found a dial blood, sweat and tears One day he hung his hammer up He wanted to do the things he loved What once was Sunday fishing Now was seven days a week wife to find me I'll be down at the creek cause I don't want to drive another nail I've worked hard to do my job and I did it well I've got the scars in these two hands to show I haven't failed I don't want to drive another Now she was a woman full of faith And old Sam was full of pride But she knew that he had one more job to do Before he died Easter Sunday rolled around In a country church for the lost and Found. Old Sam was there against his will As the preacher spoke on Calvary's hill Of how they took the master and they nailed him to a tree and You could hear old Sam a-crying as he fell down on his knees I don't want to drive another nail I want to live my life for you Lord I want to do it well you've got the scars in your two hands to show where I have failed I don't want to drive another nail no I don't want to drive another nail I want to live my life for you, Lord, I want to do it well. You've got the scars in your two hands to show where I have failed. I don't want to drive another nail. Lord, I thank you for everything you do for us. And I thank you for opening our eyes to the fact that those nails that were driven into your hands, you did that for us. And God, I pray that you would bless us today, that you would help us to look to you, to continue to look to you, not only for salvation, for help, Lord, but for the ability to show other people the love of God that maybe sometimes they fail to see. God, help us to show that to them. We love you, Lord, and we thank you for all you do. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you, folks, and uh, we'll talk to you on Thursday.